Um, it's been fun trying to keep this a surprise, so um, <laughs> so we're just so honored you would come today and um, to celebrate with us. I have the greatest honor to introduce Joy Fillingworth. She's the manager of the State Office of Rural Health, so she's going to come with the award today. So could you guys help me give her a big Woodlawn welcome? Thank you, Krista. Well, as Krista said, I'm Joyce Felmworth. I'm your Indiana State Office Rural Health Manager, residing within the State Department of Health. And I'm so excited to be here um, at Woodlawn Hospital. You're one of my most favorite hospitals. I love coming up here and, and working with your different teams on the different grants that we have. And so the um, award that I'm here to uh, present to uh, Woodlawn is called the National State Office a mouthful, National State Office Rural Health Community Star Award. Um, there's a um, SOAR manager, as we're called, State Office Rural Health, because everything's got to have an acronym, um, in, in every state. So our national organization, once a year, reaches out to each state, and they say, uh, we'd like for you to open it up for applications uh, to different hospitals, community partners, whoever in rural has made a tremendous impact on changing the way that rural health looks. So I share that opportunity with all my rural hospitals and offices and so forth, and then um, those applications are reviewed, and one community star per state is selected. And Woodlawn um, Health, Maternity Oasis, was selected. Having, and the reason for that, I mean, they were all, they're all great applications, but what really um, hit my heart was that, as we all know, OB delivery services are just, you know, going away. Seems like every day you hear of a new one being closed and not offered. And, and that's scary, you know, to think about how that impacts not only the hospital, but the community that they serve and the surrounding communities. So when Paul McKinney sent in the application and shared your program and what you were doing, to not take that route, I was just, I loved it. And so um, all the applications were submitted and I was so excited uh, when Woodlawn was selected. Thank you so much. So, um, Alan, I am here today to present you with your Community Store Star Award for 2023. Appreciate this so very much. Testament to everybody, and everybody that knows me knows I gotta make some kind of comment, right? <laughs> Nobody's laughing at the OB no more. <laughs> On behalf of Woodlawn Health Board of Directors, the staff, and physicians, we sincerely appreciate winning this Community Star Award. This award could not have been possible without the leadership and directives of our board and the dedicated staff of our OB department and our physicians who deliver, deliver excellent care to our community. An oasis within a desert provides a life-sustaining environment and provides relief to its inhabitants. Our maternity oasis lies in a desert of maternity services to Fulton County and the surrounding communities. The only hospitals providing maternity care lie 35 miles southwest and 40 miles to the northeast. There is nothing directly north, east, or west. And I would submit, however, that these maternity oases around our states can close at any time without financial support from our state and federal government. I will implore our legislators that are here today with us to look at other states, such as Michigan, which provides $7.9 million to rural and sole community-based hospitals on OB services provided to Medicaid beneficiaries. How do we pay for such a program? We can take 28% of the administrative fees for the hospital assessment fee and apply those to a program. And that will help sustain us. That will help keep us going. I remain confident that the state and federal government will eventually come up with a plan. 
optimistic yes. I close with not all is gloom and doom. Our maternity oasis has seen, and ready for this guys, a 54% increase in delivery <coughs> year over year. That is this year versus last year. From 156 births to an estimated 240 births. Year versus year, guys. What an accomplishment. As hospitals around us close their departments, we will continue to push forward as part of our mission to provide excellent health care service by highly skilled staff in a compassionate and caring manner. Once again, thank you for all your work. Welcome. Thank you. I'd like to invite you Well, good afternoon. Can you all hear me in back? Okay. Step back a little. <laughs> so, I will say, this isn't part of my prepared remarks, but I will say, when Krista asked me to give a talk, she said, we have a secret award that the hospitals receive, and that's all I was told. She said, we need you to make some remarks. We got somewhere between 5 and 20 minutes, so I took 30. No, and, um, and so... That is, that, is, that is what I was given. <laughs> now, I knew that we work with an amazing team, and so I really had no trouble coming up with some, some remarks as I thought through what I would like to share. So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chris Ricketts. I am a fellowship trained family medicine specialist, and I've had the privilege of delivering babies and working here at Woodlawn Hospital for the past 21 years. To give a little bit of background, though, I'd like to share a little bit of who I am and where I came from. At some point when I was in college, and I really don't remember what year I was, I actually had time uh, to spend uh, one afternoon with a doctor in Central Illinois. His name was Dr. Kenneth Pistorius. Now, his name will not mean anything to any of you here, I'm sure. However, he was the, the doctor who delivered my mom and all of her siblings, and this was a rural family doctor whom my grandmother held in the highest of regard. And so when I had the opportunity to spend some time with him, uh, he really imparted to me some timeless uh, principles and timeless ideas about patient care. Uh, for example, one of them that he said was, if you listen carefully, the patient is telling you the diagnosis. You just have to ask the right questions. And, and that is advice that has worn true almost every day of my career since then. Going back a little bit further, I was a freshman in high school when I decided to go into medicine. And I really can't tell you necessarily why, except that that just seemed to fit with my interests and a sense of calling. What I didn't have, though, was a really good perspective on what it meant to be a doctor. I had very little experience. I wasn't somewhere where we ran to the doctor all the time. And so, you know, the idea of being a doctor was a bit of a black hole to me as far as what that involved. So I had some limited perspective. What I did understand, though, is that it took a community of people to get me there. That it was a long haul, an arduous process, and much like I needed the right perspective, I also needed a community around me. So let's look at this a little further. Perspective, we all have it. Some call it opinion, some call it point of view, some call it their truth, but whatever it is, uh, it is shaped by experiences. And at the same time, perspective is very personal. Your perspective is different than my perspective, even if it's the same event that we both share experiencing. And so what I want to uh, help frame with us today is that Woodlawn Health, our perspective is driven by our mission. And our mission is to take care of the people of Fulton and surrounding counties and anybody who presents for care. Like our mission is to take care of the people that ask us for care. And so what I would like to uh, focus on is, especially with the obstetrics today, is the excellence in our care for the expectant mothers and their children. My partner, Dr. Debbie Sanders, has a phrase that she is fond of saying, which is that working in a rural area is a great privilege because the people we take care of, they're not just our patients. You know, they're our neighbors, they're the parents on our kids', uh, kids sports teams, you know, they're the people we go to church with, they're the people we see in the grocery store. And I've always appreciated that perspective because it really resonates deeply with what I believe as well. So anyone who cares about respect and the satisfaction that comes from earning respect appreciates the hard work that goes into it. And I would love for people to seek out care from what's on health, not because they have to, not because their insurance says this is where that you have to go, but because this is where they want to go. And I think that's something that is a refrain we can keep coming back to again and again. And this is, of course, not uh, specific to obstetrics, 
but I want our perspective to be that regardless of where somebody receives care from us, whether it's the obstetrical <coughs> the hospital, the office, the ER, that they would be satisfied with the care they receive. I would like the perspective of our patients to be one that recognizes our commitment to excellence. Woodlawn is a small rural hospital, and we will never be everything a hospital can be, but certainly we all strive to do the very best we can do at what we do do. The other lens that I would like to mark today's celebration with is community. Adapting the classic, it takes a village. Very early in my medical training, I learned up close that although doctors may receive particular recognition for patient care, it's really the nurses and the staff that are the real healthcare heroes when it comes to healthcare, uh, patient care. They're the ones that are at the bedside. They're the ones that are talking to families. The nurses and staff are often the first people that patients interact with, and they're often the last people they interact with too, whether they're able to leave with their loved ones or sadly are unable to go home with their loved ones. At the same time, in our world of legal and financial and regulatory affairs and complexities, hospitals need administrators. We need pharmacists and billing and coding specialists, among many others who work hard to keep our, the hospital ship aright in the vast sea of red tape. Would you like <laughs> I like puns. <laughs> they too are part of the community. And last and not least is the army of people who help keep the uh, 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 office and grounds looking nice. So I want to shout out to the housekeepers and maintenance people, cafeteria workers, because I know for myself, I get focused sometimes so much on the work that I do, and I think, well, if I do my job well, then they'll be satisfied with the care they receive. But I forget sometimes that if a place is dirty or unkempt, that sometimes people walk away with a, a negative impression, even though I may have done a respectably good job. So, so a shout out to you all. Now, I would be remiss if I did not highlight our obstetrical care. You see, it was not that long ago that we as a hospital were at a crossroad, and Alan alluded to this. It's a crossroad that all too many rural hospitals face. The decision we had whether, was whether to keep our OB department open or to close it. Caring for pregnant women and their families, I'm sorry, pregnant women and their infants is not a significant money maker for hospitals. And in fact, for many hospitals, it's a, it's a money loser, not a money maker. I saw firsthand the back and forth decision making process as it unfolded in real time. The board administration, along with the full support of the medical staff, chose not only to continue providing maternity and newborn care, but instead they chose the more the harder and the more uncertain path. They chose the path of making Woodland Health stand out in a desert of OB options. You see, we are committed to giving women not just the choice to come to Woodland, we are working hard to give women the highest quality of obstetrical care. I think this is also seen by the recent hires of new obstetrical providers in Dr. Witt and Dr. Amati. And I think you know the support that the hospital has given Dr. Celio as she is doing her, her obstetrical fellowship. You know, all of this really communicates that Woodland Health is positioning itself for untold generations of women to come. So to conclude, when I was in college, my dad gave me a plaque that I still have. And on that plaque was a quote from uh, the legendary Green Bay Packers coach Vince Lombardi. And the plaque says this: the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, regardless of their chosen field of endeavor. You see, our patients are the ultimate judge and jury with the work that we do here. And hopefully their continuing trust in us compels us to keep pursuing that excellence. Thank you. as Dr. Um, Griffiths alluded to. So I would love if we could please bring up all of our nurses from our maternity oasis and all our medical providers. Uh, if you could all come up and take a picture with Joyce, that would be perfectly awesome. Alyssa. You guys don't have a point. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.